you. There are not a lot of people here. We're going to make it nice and comfy, if that's all right. Um, my name is Matthias Pellebeen, um, or if you're English speaking, Matthew, that's usually a bit easier, or Bob, whatever floats the boat. Um, I'm a freelance Drupal front-end developer. Um, I'm one of the organizers of Frontend United, also Frontend Reunited. Um, we're going to talk more about that today, but I'm also the inventor of Compony.io. Compony is a platform where we can collaborate on Drupal front-end components. It's quite new, it's quite out there. If you're interested in that, please do check that out. Now, uh, you can reach out over email, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you see this face online. Everywhere is good. Um, now, Let's get started by, by explaining what Frontend United is. Frontend United is a conference um, that is organized uh, once a year. Um, and last year, or this year at least, it was in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, in Utrecht. Now, it's just a conference. Now, anyone can organize, not everyone, but anyone can put energy into organizing a conference. Now, what makes this conference so unique is that it was, um, it was started 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, we had this idea of we want to have a conference focusing on front-end and Drupal. So we kind of set up this shadow play where we organized a front-end conference for Drupal people or, or a Drupal conference for front-end people. However you want to see it, it's kind of that nice mix in the middle. Now, um, we invited the best speakers uh, globally in front end, so we fly them all over. We have quite a bit of budget going on. So we fly them all over and then we, we kind of make a drool list and from that drool list, everything uh, goes from there. Now, this year or next year at least, it's gonna be in Minsk, the first and second of May um, in Belarus. So for example, last year, the speaker list kind of looked like this, we had Jeremy Keat, Rachel Andrew, Vitaly Friedman, Lea Veru, so quite big names. Um, we, we literally fly everyone over to the same location and then we set up this conference. And we also try to mix it with a few Drupal people in there. Now, we are the biggest Drupal front-end conference in the world. That's also not very complex because there are not that many Drupal front-end conferences in the world. Um, and we are, we're very proud of that. We're very proud of the fact that we are the biggest Drupal front-end conference in the world, but we're having a tiny bit of an issue. Like this is Jeremy Keat um, last year speaking. And we have a bit of an issue in, in the public. I don't know who can, who can see the issue. The issue is that we're all white. <laughs> like it's a bit weird to say that maybe, but at some point, if you can say that you're the biggest conference in Drupal front-end and you're trying to organize a conference for the entire globe, then having an entirely white audience is not really the way forward. So we do see that as kind of a problem. So we kind of had a look at our data to see where do all of these white folks come from? <laughs> uh, and having sold tickets through Eventbrite, we kind of had a look and all of the Tickets were sold either in Europe, one in South, America, uh, South Africa, um, and a few in Northern America, a few in Eastern Europe, and a few in Russia. But for example, none of the people from India, where we have a very big community in Drupal, came to Utrecht or to Frontend United. So we kind of figured, hmm, why do those people don't come over to us? Because I'm very sure there are a lot of Drupal Frontend developers in India. Now. It's quite simple, actually, why people don't come over. Like, they're, they're quite predictable. One of them is, well, you would burn through a lot of um, personal energy trying to get there. It's, it's a long way to fly, right? You would also uh, burn through quite a bit of budget for, for flying there. You would also burn through budget for accommodation. You would also have to face possible burnout traveling that far because I traveled now from Belgium to here and it's like really, really, really far. Um, I also took very cheap flights, so that might have something to do with it. <laughs> um, you also burn through a lot of time 
trying to get there um, and not to mention like the fossil fuel that we're going to burn to get there. So we kind of are thinking, okay, the people from India are not coming over to our conference and let's have that as an example. So how can we make Frontend United be more inclusive to the entire world? That's quite a big issue, quite an ambitious issue to tackle and to think about. Um, so well, flying is bad for the environment. We have a lot of burnout in our industry and we want to be easy on everyone's budget. Um, so we needed to come up with a different approach. We needed to think a bit differently. Um, so the question was always, why do people from India not come over to our conference, no matter how cool we make it, no matter how uh, we, we pitch it towards them? But what if we change the question? What if the question no longer becomes, why do people not come over to us? Why would we change the question not to, how can we go over to them? Because that's kind of a more inclusive way of thinking, isn't it? Um, so if we change that question to say like, okay, maybe we can go over to them, then it becomes a lot more interesting because we now have this pitch for um, other organizers to say like, hey, we're going to come over to you. Are we going to give you a very high quality live stream to wherever in the world that you're located? Um, and then the answer to would you organize that is, is very much more of a yes than what we're currently having to the question, are you going to come over? Um, so the opening up that possibility is, is quite of a key thing in reaching globally. Now, what that means is that you organize in your own hometown. Your people, the people from your local community can get together. You can organize it in a context that suits your local community um, and we, we're going to make sure that you can follow the entire conference by a first row live stream now um, the only thing you would need is possibly a couch a place where people can come together an inclusive environment some safety and decent internet and that's kind of the only thing so it's it's very minimal, it's very, it's very tiny. So the idea was born that we are going to organize conferences around the world. Now, how did we call them? That's where the re comes in. So the, the conference that we were always organizing for these 10 years was called Frontend United, and now we're gonna call them Frontend Reunited. And the re then stands for remotely united or reunited in a different context in a different way. Now, for example, in India, in Delhi, uh, we, we organized this conference, so we gave them this logo, but then we also figured like, the reunited doesn't really mean anything for them, um, because for them it's just one conference. It's just, there is one conference, so reuniting is kind of off topic for them. So then we, we chose to give every uh, reunited session also a own logo. Um, so we, we're trying to localize as much as we can. Now, you already have your own branding. So whatever, whatever city that you're from, um, I only know one person in the room. <laughs> uh, whatever city that you're from, imagine that you have your own uh, logo customized to the style guide of Frontend United. Then on our end, we're going to make sure that we're live streaming from uh, the first row. Um, and it's very professional. So people from here to record usually help us in recording that and live streaming it. There's only a delay of 30 seconds before you can see it wherever in the world. Um, and it's super professional. The audio quality is very good and um, it kind of looks like this. So for example, they switch actively from uh, slides to, let's go internet. They actively switch from slides to Speaker, the video is not really loading. Mm. Damn. Let's try that again. Oh, now it goes. There we go. So they have a close up, they have a, a far away view, they, they also focus back on the slides. So this is, for example, the small room, and then this is uh, the slides of the big room. Uh, where Vitaly Friedman was talking. So you kind of have a look at the audience, you have a, a camera that follows around the speaker. So what I always feel like is that people looking at the live stream usually have a better experience than people sitting in the actual audience 
from our conference because you kind of can see the facial expressions no matter from where you're sitting. Um, but then, so let's summarize. Let's say that we are going to organize a conference in your hometown um, with a very close up live stream, then it would still feel like a far away experience, right? So therefore, we kind of feel like, no, we want to have everyone be able to participate. It doesn't mean if you're far away that you shouldn't be able to participate. So therefore, we set up uh, or we are using a platform called slido.com um, where people can go to, they can ask questions, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to have a test of this right now with people that are here now. Um, so if you now go to on your phones to slido.com and you fill in the hash frontend um, and you ask me a question, any question, uh, you're going to see it appear hopefully um, and now come some awkward seconds before people are able to do this now the cool thing is people can upvote questions um, and the other cool thing is according to slido which is obviously a sales pitch um, <laughs> testing yes thank you <laughs> um, according to slido you kind of are making people um, collaborate, not collaborate, participate three times more than at a normal conference. If you ask people to ask questions live, one, uh, two out of three people won't dare to ask questions. So again, it's not really inclusive for people that are not comfortable with public speaking or asking public questions. Um, yes, it is very cool indeed. <laughs> now, use this platform also if you want to ask questions so people can upvote other people's questions. Um, we're going to have a look at this view again at the end of this presentation. The cool bit is, if you then imagine we're using this platform for all of these live stream events, um, the question is then asked on the platform, the questions are shown in the exact same way like I'm showing them here, um, and then an MC goes on stage and then asks the questions on the live stream. So you kind of have a look at what questions are going to be asked because it's usually the most upvoted ones. And then you, on the live stream that you're looking at, people are going to answer the questions, which is really cool, right? It's very close uh, into your face, really participating. It's really close up. Now, again, summary. We're going to organize a live stream in your hometown, world-class speakers. You're going to be able to participate and you're going to get your own branding. So what would you need to do to make this happen, for example, in, in Hobart? Well, you would need to have a public space and so maybe you're only going to set up one room where you're just going to show the live stream. Simple enough, right? You have a projector, you have some water, you have some coffee, or maybe you want to supplement it with like a local session. Maybe someone wants to also speak at the local event. So you can switch between local sessions and live stream sessions, or maybe two local sessions, maybe two rooms, or maybe two rooms for live stream, and then you can supplement them however you want there, or maybe a workshop and another room or maybe a few workshops however you want to compose your schedule however you want to see Frontend United in your hometown it's completely possible I we're there to help you with it um, now I believe that this works because flexibility is the mother of creativity it should be going now yes Flexibility is the mother of creativity. What do I mean with that? That however you want to organize it as, we're there to help you because that's flexibility we would love to offer. I will we'll do you one better. Um, however you want to facilitate your own schedule, however you want to facilitate your own time zone adapted program, we give you also a web page that sums up all that information. So for example, for Delhi, you have a bit of a description this video should really mm, do something. I'm going to refresh again. That helped. Yes. Um, and then you have a bit of information about your event. You have the location where your event is going to be. So you don't need to host some random extra uh, website in order to make advertising for your local event. You have your own local schedule. So these are all local speakers in Delhi, and then they also have a live stream. The contrast is a bit off here. Um, they have the green room and the yellow room. You can compose however everything you want. 
So we, we accommodate however you want to, which is pretty cool. And if you now think, ah, oh, no, it's still going to be too much work. Well, we were serious about that couch. If you want to have a couch with just four people and you want to call it Front End United, we're there. Like we had one event doing that. Um, because why not? They were just, they had a reason then to stop working for the day, <laughs> which is good enough. Or maybe you want to organize a 500 event in the middle of Kathmandu. Like, why not? However you want to do it, it's possible. That's really cool, right? Um, and just a small reminder that I'm not standing in front of you with a sales pitch. I should be because I'm currently without a job, but <laughs> I'm not here with a sales pitch. Um, we're not selling the live stream. We don't have anything financially to gain from people joining us. This is a completely volunteer run initiative. It's a completely volunteer run uh, conference. Um, and our only hope is that we share knowledge far and wide. So us not relying on you financially, uh, over here, us not relying on you financially also means that the other way around is valid too. You shouldn't rely on us financially. Every event that is organized ideally should be organized completely by itself. And if you don't find any sponsors, well, then don't print any t-shirts. Uh, or if you do find sponsors or maybe sell tickets, then maybe have a social event of your own. However you want to see it, we're there to help you accommodate it. Um, so the more financial backing you can find, the more fun you can make it. Now, um, it all now sounds like Matthew is talking about a lot of hypotheticals, um, which is fair enough. Um, so, for example, this is how Delhi participated this year. Uh, not huge crowd, but it's the first time they organize it. So it's pretty cool to see people unite over there. Um, they even went as far as having local sessions and customized goodies of their own, which is pretty cool. Right? Um, now, it's kind of cool for me to see this on a map. I find it amazing that they were following from right all the way over there, like you're all the way over here, I know, but like that's pretty cool, right? To just have that sync, to just be um, accommodating a diverse community, like geographically. Now, the cool thing is that it wasn't only Delhi. In total last year, we had like 15 locations organizing all of them front end the United event. And we've been only been doing this for two years. Like uh, the year before that, we only had four events. And so kind, it kind of rolled over into this, this, this globally organic thing. And what is also very cool is that Tasmania for now was a bit too far away in time zones. Um, from, from the Netherlands. Well, we're gonna move from the Netherlands to Belarus, which is one hour difference. It's not gonna fix a lot of things. But in Kathmandu, they're also having English speaking sessions, which means they're also trying to live stream this year. So it can organically grow into every uh, time zone can actually participate. And as soon as you start live streaming, then people can contribute for there or people can, uh, watch those sessions. Um, so we build a system that everyone can watch from each other and we kind of have this global event going on now. Now, this all might sound like, why does this work? Why do people find this interesting? And I kind of, I'm gonna step out of the organizer's role. I'm gonna go back as a developer for a second here to explain this. I think why this concept works is because the same idea works for um, people that want to work from home. Like we're now with eight people in the room. How many of you can work remotely if you want to? Everyone, excellent, perfect. Okay, the next question is totally invalid. Um, <laughs> so it's cool that we can work remotely if you want to. It's a flexibility. It doesn't mean we have to, but there are a lot of companies still in Europe that you're forced to work from nine to five in the office, which is a bit annoying if you think about it, because I'm lucky or you're all lucky that you evolved or that company evolved away from that uh, 
centric way of thinking. Because if you work from an office, then you all go to the same place, and if you don't want to be there, then we usually just distract each other. We first stuck in traffic in order to get there, and then we, we distract each other a bit more. So it's a bit counterintuitive. And the only advantage of working in the office, if you filter out communication issues that you might have, is that the boss can see you working. It's the only real advantage. The only reason why companies don't want you to work from home is that, is that third one. It's because the, comp because the boss won't see you work, and therefore he or she won't realize that you're actually working. They won't trust you. Um, now, if we compare this to being able to work from home, then I read a study. Obviously, if you're looking for data, you're always going to find data backing up whatever you want to tell. So, so 91%. According to that study, 91% of people are more likely to be more productive. Um, now, if they want to be working from home. And from that 91%, 13% are... No. Yeah, you're going to be 13% more productive. Whew. Otherwise, no. <laughs> um, which is a pretty amazing number, right? If you're a company owner, there's a very good chance you want to do this and you're going to benefit from it. You will have a better work-life balance. Um, and the whole approach just feels more people-centric. It feels more um, friendly towards the people that you're working with. You're, you're respecting them. So if you compare the two, then, in my opinion, I would call the first one a company-centered, boss-selfish approach. And then the second one would be a person-centered, respectful approach. Now, I'm very glad you all showed your hands, otherwise this would be a very difficult slide to explain. Now, why do I say, why do I compare this with remote working and, and working uh, in the office? Because it, it's exactly the same thing for conference organizing, we found. Like, if we organize a conference in one location, which is, by the way, very normal, this is not like to give anyone slack, um, which is very normal to organize a conference in one location, then you're kind of expecting every attendee to spend money and time and energy trying to get to the location that you chose to organize in. Again, very normal, but if you then see it next to a conference that is split up over different locations, the same benefits kind of apply. Uh, if you don't use Slido as a platform, then only one in three people will be confident enough to ask questions. And the only benefit of this whole setup is that so the organizer can see that you're actually attending. That's the only benefit, if you think about it. Now, if you compare it to splitting, up for, splitting it up over different locations, then you respect everyone's time and energy and budget. And you also can say that anyone can ask questions from whatever location that you're in. The only downside of it is that the organizer is going to get have to get over themselves that they can't see you attending which was a bit weird actually for me like you only see photos coming from african um events like a week later they're they were very slow with sending us a few photos so you weren't really sure if they were organizing um which felt weird but in the end it, it feels super powerful now um where do we go from here? Well, I kind of want to, having explained this, I kind of want to um, explain what my personal reasons are for putting all of this time and energy into organizing Frontend United. Um, and it kind of centers around, in my opinion, there are a lot of things that divide us and there are a lot of things that unite us. And I have the benefit of being massively interested in both. I'm both interested in, in seeing people unite, and I'm both also interested in seeing what people actually divide, um, or what makes people be divided. Um, so I kind of find that we differ usually culturally. Like I'm from the other side of the world. There's a very big chance we're going to have a different culture in some way or another. I'm going to have a different intonation. I'm going to have a different language that we speak natively. Um, we live in a totally different part of the world, so there are going to be some things different. So that, those are the differences that, I guess, divide us in some ways. But then in everyday life, next to having all of those differences, um, we also have a bigger idea that unites us, and that is the web, that's Drupal, that, that's the reason that we're here. Um, 
And for me, I think the web is an amazing thing. For me, the web is, is, is amazing because no matter what skin color that you have, you do your layout with CSS or tables, I guess, but usually CSS. Um, no matter what religion that you practice, you're gonna like HTML if you like the web. There are no cultural differences in how we implement JavaScript frameworks. Like, I found it usually uh, daunting or, or um, scary to talk, people, to talk to people from a different religion uh, a few years ago because I wasn't very accustomed to talking with people that didn't have the same religion as I did. Um, yet, when we speak about CSS, all of a sudden, all of those boundaries disappear, which I find really cool, which I find a perfect gateway into uniting people in a different way. Now, for me, I, this means that I became the diversity lead for Frontend United. Uh, we, we blogged about it quite a bit, very long blog posts too. Um, and being the diversity lead, for me, diversity means accepting difference. And, and I think it's very valid um, label to use. Because if you organize in a global context, all of things become very complex, very fast. Because you're literally combining um, cultures together over the same label and over the same context, over the same content. Um, now, it's a very easy way to organize if you want to stay clear of the gray zone of diversity. It's super easy. You just simply don't think about it. It's amazingly easy. Um, we've done that for a long time, but now we're slowly growing into uh, facing it head on. Because we kind of realized that if you are an organizer of an event or if you are a public speaker, and especially if you're organizing Frontend United, which is globally, you put yourself in a position of power. You put yourself in a position of privilege where you can reach other people. If you don't use that privilege to, no, if you, if you use that privilege to stand spineless in the shadow of political correctness, I'm going to call you stiff. Because that's literally what it is. If you only use that power to literally just ignore the entire problematic um, scene, then then what are we actually doing and who are we doing it for? Now, we're all sheltered off of inequalities in our daily lives. Um, so for me, the main thing was educating ourselves and the organizers that we were organizing with about which inequalities that we're not aware of. For example, this map I found, uh, and I still find it very stunning. Um, anyone wants to take a guess? what this map represents. Well, it's obviously the world, but I mean, what do the colors represent? I find it crazy. So the parts in brown uh, shows all the countries where it's still legal to discriminate based on sexual orientation or gender identity. That's nuts. Like, that's crazy. I'm super glad Australia is not part of it or a majority of Europe is not part of it, but that's crazy. Isn't it? If you think about um, how many countries, like there are 195 countries in the world. I googled that before I wanted to ask this question. I don't know all of them, obviously. Um, if you take a guess, if you have to say a number of how many countries uh, where there is a jail time on being lesbian or gay, Anyone? Have a guess. Go on. 150, where there's a jail time. OK. Wow. I guessed way lower than that. No, it's actually 73, which I find already an astonishing high number. Five out of them. No, five more uh, actually give you the death sentence for being gay, which is crazy, like in many ways. Like we also organize in Rwanda, um, where it's illegal to be gay. Not that you could fix that, but they claim, the Rwandan government claims that there are no gay people in the country. Well, yeah, obviously, if it's illegal, then no one's going to say that they're going to be gay. Um, so a lot of questions arise from that. A lot of questions arise from trying to organize a conference and trying to prevent cross-culture 
uh, conflict. For example, is it okay to broadcast a gay speaker into Rwanda? And if so, how do we tackle that? So there's a lot of complexity that, that arrives. Now, I find it amazingly interesting. So if you do too, then ask me that question in, in Slido. Um, so let's cover some, some really uh, successful events that, that happened and the people that were behind them. So one of them is Tsega. He said that he's, he was already very active in the community. He thought he knew everyone that does Drupal, but he met a lot of people from a younger generation. Um, so that was crazy for him. And he's living in Ethiopia, in the capital Addis Ababa. Um, and the event looked like this for him, very low key. This is one of the rooms. They were looking at a live stream from uh, Rachel Andrew. Um, I find that pretty wild to, to phantom that a part of me made this happen or a part of my energy made this happen. Uh, the same thing goes for India and Delhi. This is Shadab. Um, he organized the majority of the event there. Uh, he said that everyone was super excited to, to network and level up their skills. And it looked a bit like this, which is also, again, amazing to see because we only see this afterwards, after it happened. Um, this is Sagat and Catalan. Now, Catalan is also now part of um, the organizing team of Frontend United. He's living in Romania, funny fact, uh, that's 4,000 kilometers away from Kathmandu. He just knew one person in Kathmandu and he figured, oh, I would love to organize a conference there. And it, it turned out to be the biggest conference ever in Kathmandu to this date, which is crazy if you think about it. It looked a bit like this, like they were doing a live stream. This is only one of the rooms. It's amazing to see this happen. Now, another one, Isabella and Ivan from Colombia, Cali. Um, they say that a lot of people came from out of time, from out of town, and got involved and got their questions answered. Um, and they also recorded their sessions and they're also looking into live streaming their sessions. Um, but this is going to be in Spanish, so we're gonna have four Spanish sessions. sessions. Yeah. Which is gonna be amazing. Like, this is how we want to see the conference organically grow. So that looks like this. Pretty big too. Um, this is Nevena and Miroslav, organized a niche. Um, they had four local workshops, five social events, <laughs> which is a lot. Um, 120 attendees. And next year, they want to uh, ask for a ticket price uh, just because they want to donate that money to charity because now they didn't do anything for charity. Like, you can't make this up. Like, that's Alexander. He is one of the, uh, he is the person that made all the localized logos for each remote event. And in purple, that person's Miriana, and she's kind of the global coordinator, coordinating all of these global events together. A few more. Mark from Rwanda, amazing person. Um, he organized it for the very first time. No, for the second time in Rwanda, but it was his first time to organize it. Uh, they had local MCs that were summarizing the content because there was a bit of a language barrier there. Um, because the speed at which the speakers were sp speaking uh, wasn't slow enough for them to catch up with all the content that was being said. Um, something really cool, they, uh, the person that was organizing this, Mark, he actually funded parts of this himself uh, from his own pocket because the sponsors fell through. And then afterwards we go like, okay, we're gonna reimburse you that, that money because we don't want you to actually lose money organizing. So we have a bit of a buffer to help, but ideally it's a bit, it's a bit different. Um, Frank, an amazing person. I highly recommend reading this. It's written in the most Burkina Faso way possible. Um, he's from Ouagadougou uh, and he said, um, for us in Burkina Faso, Frontend United, Frontend Reunited was like a warning bell that told us, hey, wake up. The world is changing with the pace of technology. And he said, like, we're awake now and we don't want to sleep again. We are awake and we're hungry. Hungry for knowledge, hungry for technology. And in the bottom of the blog post, he actually added his own phone number, which I go, no, you can't, you can't do this. <laughs> it's not how the web works. 
Um, it looked like this. He even got the ICT minister over uh, to have a session um, of her own, which is crazy, if you ask me. Um, and if you think like, oh, that's pretty cool, well, your name could be on this too. No place is now too far, or no, no location, no context, no concept is, is, is too weird. Um, whoever you're thinking of, of participating in this, um, you could make an impact with your local community, or you can, you can set up a local community. The conference, you, sh you should really look at the conference not as something divine, not as something that's like super crazy, that, that has a very fixed concept. The conference, I and everyone that's organizing this, we really see the conference as a tool. And it's only a tool. And the tool is only there to connect people with each other. And the tool is only as good as the people that use it. I, I always say that Frontend United and Frontend Reunited is merely the sum of, the, of all the organizers involved, the sum of all the volunteers involved. And I would love to see what you come up with, what idea you would love, ha what idea you would love to see executed. Whatever idea you have, you lead and we follow. Um, so what I already said was that next year is going to be in May. I kind of duplicated this slide. And that's kind of it. And I want to close down by saying that my name is still Matthias Pellebin. Uh, I'm still a freelance Drupal front-end developer without a job. Um, <laughs> if you want to get involved in any way, go check out frontendunited.org slash get involved. Um, loads of ways to get involved as a volunteer, as an organizer. Um, and if you think this, this idea is pretty ambitious, you've seen nothing yet. Um, tomorrow morning I'm giving a session on Componi and all of this dwarfs almost in comparison. Um, in terms of tunnel vision and <laughs> ambition. Um, so Componi, very shortly, an open source tooling workflow for Drupal front-end developers, a brand new platform, the equivalent of Drupal.org, but for Drupal front-end developers. Um, and that's kind of it, that's Componi. So thank you very much for giving me the privilege to talk to you and uh, giving me your attention. So let's see what the questions are. How does this work for the time zones? Um, oh, you can, you can raise your hand if you want to. Is the name next to it? Oh yeah, Federico. Uh, so how does this work for the time zones? Well, it's very interesting actually. For example, in uh, Chicago, in, in Northern America, in the States, um, they only had content for their mornings. So they only had a session. Wait, is that right? I have to say it correctly. Yeah. They only had a session in their mornings and then they had a few sessions of their own in the afternoon. Um, in terms of where we are located now around Australia, then it would only work if you hosted in the evening. So maybe you would have Front End United evenings, like get togethers, like a short meetup which would be pretty cool. Um, time zones also work in a way that if we live stream something at 8 o'clock in our um, 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, or 8 a.m. for us, then the site calculates when that live stream event will happen in the location that you chosen for your reunited event. But there's also a different um, idea there. So we have three different types of sessions that you could host. You could have local sessions, for example, in Hobart. You could have a live stream session, which is also already explained, but you also could have a recording of a live stream session. So as soon as the live stream session is done, you can also see that recording. The only question then is, well, the only limitation then is that you can't ask questions because that person already left the stage. Um, if that answers your, your question. Another question is, how would we approach this for DrupalCon? Um, well, we kind of already see this as a working way for DrupalCon. If you look at DrupalCon, why it doesn't work in Europe, they, I believe, have a few hundred thousand uh, under zero every time they organize in Europe, and they, they are in the plus every time they organize it in the States. 
And it's very simple. Why? In the States, you have one market. That's a ginormous market where you can find sponsors and then it's not weird to sponsor an event that's across uh, from the States. In Europe, it's a bit different. If DrupalCon is held in the Netherlands, like it was this year, then no company from Belarus would ever sponsor that. Because it's like two countries over. Like, they don't have a market in the Netherlands. So they always fall short of funds for DrupalCon. And in this way, yes, it would work for DrupalCon. It would work way better than our current setup. I don't see how this wouldn't work for any conference, actually. The only limitation you should have is that you have to limit the visibility of your live stream links. Um, you can only show the live stream URL to the organizers. Otherwise, you risk be, um, that people would just sit on their couch at home and just watch the live stream and don't actually connect. And that's something we, we actively go against. We don't want people, yes, we are for diversity. And if you send us a reason why you don't want to go to a conference, then we will still send you the link. But the default is that people should get together and have this social contact. Um, Is this now also scroll? No, I have to go here. There we go. Um, yes, so how cool is this? Very cool. <laughs> uh, are the videos online after the conference? Yes. Um, we have the videos already after a week, normally. Uh, maybe sometimes a few weeks. Um, but the videos are online for everyone to watch. We even also caption them. So we, we are working together with the company Rev.com. I believe they're based in India, where we caption all the videos, so they're also better for search engine optimization and for people uh, being impaired, for example. Which bits are implemented in Drupal? It's the last question. Um, I'm not sure who asked that question, or yes, what bits do you mean? Oh, uh, like the website that you oh, yeah. learned, and how do you stream video? Is that going through the Drupal site? Ah, live streaming happens purely on, on YouTube because um, that was a bit too risky to build that for ourselves. Um, but the website and everyone's page is completely built with Drupal 8. Um, so each, for example, you have a bunch of roles for reunited organizers, so they can go in and do their own editing of their own page. Um, they can also add speakers of themselves. They can then check the box if it's a remote speaker so it doesn't show up on our page. Um, same thing goes for sponsors, same thing goes for everything, really. So yeah, that's completely built in, in Drupal. So I guess that's it. Thank you very much.